Hello, and welcome to chapter 16, where we will be talking about thermodynamics. Here we have our intro slide for the chapter, which is showing an example of a spontaneous reaction. In this chapter, our focus is on identifying whether or not reactions happen. Hopefully, you realize that we have already been describing this. We have been talking about equilibrium so far this semester, where equilibrium tells us whether a system is product favored or reactant favored. And so when we're describing whether a system is spontaneous, we're trying to determine whether that reaction will happen, whether it will make products. And so that is our goal in this chapter. Our next slide is the obligatory source of uh, some links that I have. This is a reminder slide of topics that we'll be discussing, particularly in this very first section of the chapter. So recall that from first semester of Chem 150 or 151, you studied thermochemistry. In that chapter, you calculated various ways of determining the enthalpy of a reaction, the study of heat exchanges. And we've already described that this semester. The specific sections that we cover from chapter five are section one, two, and three. If these topics don't sound familiar to you, I will recommend that you go back to chapter five to review. We will briefly review them this semester, but if you need more review, more in-depth, please go back to chapter five. So these from chapter five are all enthalpy definitions. This semester, we will be introducing the concept of entropy in a few videos. So again, our goal with thermodynamics is to determine if a reaction will happen. So again, we're trying to answer the question, will the reaction happen? In other words, is it spontaneous? Two things that we will describe specifically as we go throughout the semester is determining the direction a reaction is going to go. This is the same that we've already discussed when we compared Q to K. So remember when we were comparing Q, we were determining whether our reaction was still moving forward to reach equilibrium. And remember that K is our equilibrium constant. That tells us whether we have more reactants or products at equilibrium. And so a spontaneous process is one that will proceed on its own without any external influence. And the key caveat here is that if the right criteria are met. So in other words, we have to have a certain set of criteria available. In other words, if we want a reaction to go, we have to have the reactants present. But spontaneous means that once I combine those reactants under the right conditions, usually temperature, that that reaction will go. So we'll see as we progress through this chapter that temperature is the key determining factor to tell us whether or not a reaction will happen. When we say that a reaction is spontaneous, it means that that reaction is moving forward toward equilibrium. Key definition to keep in mind as we go through this chapter. So for example, if we have the system like the one here on the left, we have all of these gas molecules in here, but we have this closed system. And on the right side, we have a vacuum. Now, once I open this stopcock and allow the gas molecules to flow, they will spontaneously move from one side to the other. So the condition that has to be met here is that I have to open the stopcock. Realize that this reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction, but it is non-spontaneous in the reverse direction. In other words, there is no chance that all of these molecules on the right side will spontaneously and instantly move to the left to replicate what we started with. Other examples of spontaneous processes include a ball rolling downhill. So if I'm at the top of the hill and I'm holding onto a ball, as soon as I let go, it will spontaneously roll downhill. It will not spontaneously roll uphill. Same idea, an egg will boil in hot water. It will not unboil if I uncool or if I cool the water. Ice will melt at room temperature. Solid sodium will react violently with water every time. By the way, if you haven't seen that reaction, I highly recommend uh, clicking on a YouTube video to, to find that one. 
It's amazing. And as you've already studied with heat flow, heat will always flow from a hotter object. So red here is at a higher temperature. When these two boxes come into contact, the heat will flow from the hotter object to the colder one. To determine the spontaneity of a reaction, we have to look at both the enthalpy and the entropy of the reaction. Systems tend to move toward a lower state of energy. When we study enthalpy, most or many spontaneous processes tend to be exothermic. And so we'll see as we describe the enthalpy of reactions that exothermic reactions tend to be spontaneous. However, it is possible for an endothermic reaction to be spontaneous again under the right conditions. For example, melting ice is an endothermic process. But if I put ice above zero degrees Celsius, it will spontaneously melt. So we have to look at both the enthalpy and the entropy to predict spontaneity. The second factor that again we'll introduce in a few more videos is that of entropy. And again, when we introduce this one, we'll go into more detail, but we see that the entropy of a system tends to increase for spontaneous systems. It is possible to have a decrease in entropy. And again, we'll describe that in more detail as we get to entropy. And this will conclude our introduction of the thermodynamic chapter.